What's up guys, Tim Halstead, welcome back to the channel. So this is something I haven't really done before, but I think you're gonna be excited as I am right now. So I've brought on another person onto the channel who's gonna be kind of a consultant, more of towards me because, you know, I'm no pro engine builder. I, I've built plenty of engines, pretty much only Cleveland's, but I never really did it to this degree that I'm gonna start doing it now. And I figure if I can learn, you can learn. So I'll kind of show you some of the tools of the trade and where I'm at. So I had to give a big shout out to Larry Sullivan, Pie Man Racing. He hooked me up with some toys, we'll call them. They're not really toys, but man, I can't wait to use them. So let's check them out. So, you know, these aren't some huge high dollar measuring instruments, but for what I'm doing in DBG, they're going to be good enough for me. You know, they're a quality product. He's used them before. Uh, recommended, hey, for a starter set, get this. This is a nice dial bore gauge, and it can move, measure up to four here, but then you have the adapter, so it can go to two inches. So I got this off eBay. It was like $79 or something. I'll put a link on there if I can. And then these little shims, there's 20 thousandths, 20, 40, 60, and 120. So you add them onto these anvils to change the length depending on what bore you're working with. Now, he also sent me this set of mics. Thanks, Pie Man. <clears throat> Made in China, but whatever. You know what? They're good enough for me. But they come, this is a four to five. Nice wooden case with a measuring standard. And then there's another set here, which is your zero to one, one to two, three to four, two to three. Everything you need for me to start doing what I'm doing. What I wanted to start to do was I wanted to start measuring the piston to bore clearance on this 354 Cleveland and measure the bore itself. It's supposed to be a 4015 bore, 015. So I want to make sure that's what I'm working with to make sure there's no issues with a clearance issue. Because I'm going to kind of, I guess you call it blueprinting, right? I'm going to measure everything, write it all down and go through it, make sure it's what Brent had it set for. So I will show you some of these cool flags that he sent me. Banners, comp cams. There's another one for, it looks like, uh, Schaefer oil and lubricants. So those are cool. They're going to be hung up in DVG. It's always nice to get that kind of stuff. Thanks, Larry. So one of the things, obviously, with any measuring instrument, you want to be careful with it. Don't be dropping it, doing anything stupid like that. So in this case, the bore is a 4015. So this anvil here is 4-inch. So that's not going to work, right, if it's bigger than that. So it comes with these little shims. And in this case, I'm going to add a 20 thousandths to this. And I'm one of those guys that I like to keep everything in the case. When I'm done with it, I put it right back. Because otherwise, that's how you lose things, especially these little things. So you put it on the anvil like that, slides on there. And then you could go like this and put it on that way. I don't know, I'm weird. I just put it this way. Then I have to worry about it losing it. It's on there. You take the little collar, put that on there, screw it down. Simple as pie, nothing to it. And then you can see here this little tab sticking out, little tit there. That's what makes this work back and forth. So now that we have this set up for 4020, right? You need a little bit bigger to measure that bore. So now what we're going to do is set the standard, so to speak. So we've got this. I don't want to drop that. I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to show you how to measure the, the cylinder bore with a dial bore gauge. Now, to do that, you need a micrometer. This is a 4 to 5. The bore is 4015. So the first thing you do is make sure that the micrometer is accurate. So I, I put it in a vise with some padding. I don't tighten it too much just so I don't have to hold on to it. And what you want to measure is a standard. This is a 4-inch standard. I want to make sure this mic measures 4 inches. Lots of things that contribute to this, which is the temperature can even contribute the location of this standard can also affect it so you want it as square as you can you tighten it up with this handle here or this screw and it should be at zero so let's see and sure enough that's at zero i'll see if i can show you a little bit better i'm going to lock that in and then i don't know if you're going to be i'll pull, hold it right up there where you can see but you can see the zero and that's what we're going to go with, that that's accurate. 
Now that should pull right out of there, which it does. I locked it in. Now that we know that this is four inch, I took the standard out. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this at 4015, the diameter of the bore that it's supposed to be. Put the 15 there, lock it in, put in the vise, just snug it. Now we're gonna zero this bore gauge because we want that to be read zero. And it takes some manual dexterity to get it perfect. And that reads zero. Let's go now to the engine. Now making this reel, it's, it's going to be hard. You don't need to see me. So we put it in there. We want it the same spot we had it before when you're measuring stuff. And right now it's perfect. And what do I see right there? The needle's going back and forth. So it's one thousandths over. So it's a 4016, what I see here. The main thing is to keep it accurate and right in the yep, up right there. That's at the 1000 mark. See how it goes back and forth and swings, lowest point right there. So this is a 4016 bore. Okay guys, there you go. Now I only did it in one area and you wanna do it in three areas, top, middle, and bottom to go down to make sure there's no taper in there that someone held the hone in the wrong spot too long. Also, you can turn this 90 degrees and check to make sure that it's cylindrical, that the, it's a square bore all the way down through. All right, guys, you saw me measure the bore of the 354. It's 4016. What's a thousands? <laughs> but here's the deal now. What I want to measure is the piston, the bore clearance. Now, in theory, if you knew the diameter of the piston and you subtract it from the bore, that would tell you the clearance. But it doesn't always work that way. If you want to be exact, you use gauges and measure it. So what I did is I took the piston and put this ring installer on it just so I could have a point of reference. I've never done this. I'm just kind of doing it the way I think it would be easy to do and I'd be able to reproduce it. So I measured from here to here with a caliper so it's at the same distance. Now what I did is I set the mic in here and I'm going to measure this and come up with the diameter of the piston. Then put the dial bore gauge in, zero that, and then measure, and that will tell us the clearance. Now one of the things I was... I, was listening to is this meeting that I go to on a Zoom meeting on Tuesdays. Now you want to make sure you're perpendicular to that wrist pin. And you can almost see where it's straight against the piston. You turn a thimble. And I'm going to take it just like that, lock it in, slide the piston out of there, and then let's get a reading and see what we have. But they were talking about piston to bore clearance, and if, you know, the more cylinder pressure you have, the more heat, the more clearance you need, especially with like a blown application or a pro stock or nitrous or that kind of thing. But I think they were talking about, I want to say it was pro stocks, they have like 10 to 12 thousandths of clearance. So looking at this measurement, this looks like 09. So 4.09 is what I'm coming up with. Five, six, seven, eight. It's actually 8,500. So I guess we could do that. We'll say it's 8,500. We're just doing this with what I read, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to write that down. 408,500. So now let's set the bore gauge up to that and then we'll measure the clearance. Now again, like I said, handle these things with care. And when you're setting it up for zero, you gotta be careful. You can't influence it by pushing it back and forth. You wanna have a light touch with it. So I put this in the anvil between it. Like that. I'll tell you, that's perfect. That's at zero right there. So let's go to the 354 and measure that, and that'll give us the piston to bore clearance. So again, put it in the same spot that you measured the piston bore, and it's the same deal. You want to go in different areas, top, middle, and bottom. I'm just doing this as a demonstration. I want to make sure that's good and perpendicular and where it was. And we're looking at, let's see, that's five. That would be six. I think four to six is good for a drag race application. You guys can comment on that. 
that's five, that's six. I'm at like right about seven. Five, six, seven. That's what I'm gonna call it right there. So looking at that, that comes out to about seven thousandths piston to bore. So there you go. Now you could, if we knew the diameter of the piston, we could just subtract it from that and that's good mathematically. But for the exact clearance of what you have here, because nothing's ever better than using a gauge or a measurement, I'll go with that. At seven thousandths, that's probably fine for this. I'm not gonna change it anyways. When I do my little scotch Bright hone just to kind of clean things up, it's probably not gonna change it much anyways. So I'm happy with that. Even if it was eight, I'm okay with that. You know, and to me, it's no different than measuring the cylinder bore diameter. You wanna measure three different areas, top, middle, and bottom, and then turn the bore gauge 90 degrees and do the same thing. What you're looking for is contricity. You wanna make sure that cylinder is square even though it's round. Make sense? But I'm glad you guys are here for this engine build series, at least a new series of videos to help me learn this, and then you can learn it too, because it's easy to understand if someone explains it well. And the videos that I've seen, just they, they were okay, but they didn't really lay it down and let me understand it. Maybe I was thick at that point in time. But like I said, I'm glad you're here, because at Drag Boss Garage, you're always seeing and learning something new. And I guarantee that to you. Stay tuned.